everybody, I'm Hannah and I'm here to show you how to do some very simple art projects that can keep you busy at home. Um, today's project is to make a picture like this uh, using the technique we call collage where we just cut and stick bits of paper um, onto our paper and the, uh, the picture that we're making today is a lovely tree as you can see. Okay, so it's a simple project this. I think children of any age can have a go but it's also fun for adults too. And you only need very simple materials as well, so that's good. So you just need some stick glue like this, uh, a pair of scissors, obviously, any kind. I just use this, you know, these are kind of kids' safety scissors. These are absolutely fine. Um, now, if you do have one of these at home, these are great for this project. This is what we call a stamper, where you can cut out nice round pieces of paper with it. Okay, so you can buy these in craft stores. They're very useful for this. Of course, you don't need it. You can use good old scissors. Um, the other thing that you will need is some a selection of coloured paper. Now, um, I am a big believer in never throwing away any paper that comes into your house. Um, so hopefully you will have a stash of paper at home if you're a bit like me. Um, but if not, you can just start now with a very some very simple bits of like coloured paper. You need like a nice ideally coloured piece of paper for your background but I mean it could be white it doesn't matter and then um, some other bits of paper that you're going to use to build up your collage now so what I recommend is a few pieces of uh, that are plain like this that don't have any kind of pattern on them uh, but equally some pattern paper is nice if you have that now you may be thinking I don't have too much pattern paper at home uh, of course you can use things like gift wrap, any bits of that you have lying around, stuff like that. Or the other alternative is you can make your own. Okay, so here's two examples of some paper that I have made myself. Okay, so I just got some colour paper, whatever colour, and I got some poster paint and just painted some patterns on it to give it some texture. Here's another one that was done with a little bit of ink okay and put some interest on them yourself so if you're really struggling for paper that's got different patterns and things on it that's what you can do you can make homemade ones okay so hopefully you have at least a few different colors of paper and you can before you start making your tree picture you could start decorating some paper of your own once you've got those things you're ready to go we can move on to the next step Hi everybody, okay, so welcome to step two of making your uh, collage tree picture. Um, right, so let's talk in a bit more detail about colours. So I've decided um, that I'm going to do a blue tree. So I've, I've selected lots of shades of blue for my paper. Um, I've gone through my stash and found lots of shades of blue. Um, and I'm going to do it, I'm going to use my knowledge of the colour wheel where I look at colours that kind of um, complement each other. So the opposite colour to blue is orange, so I have some orange paper that I'm going to use as my background. I think it's quite a nice light orange, I think I don't want too dark colours, but you know, that's just my personal choice. You can, you can kind of decide however you like. Now, again, I should have said before as well, the other thing you can do if you're really struggling even for coloured paper is this is just some white paper that I have just painted. So if you're thinking, oh, I just, I don't have all this brightly coloured paper at home, then I'm going to struggle. Um, that's the other thing you can do. You can just do a nice uh, kind of covering the whole paper, coloured paper like that, and you're good to go. You can use poster paint. You can even dilute it a little bit with a bit of water to get good coverage and you can just do that okay so um, that's the first step collect your papers together um, again I've got some homemade ones that I've done myself just put some texture on like this the other thing I wanted to say that is great to use is um, if you're a bit of an art fan anyway um, you probably are if you're watching this video you might well have lots of old paintings of your own at home um, uh, that you don't necessarily want to keep because they're not great masterpieces so 
Another great thing to use for stuff like this is these old paintings. You can see it in this, my, this one, the finished one. These pieces here were an old painting of mine that I just cut up. Okay, so this is a great way to reuse them because they'll have lovely colours in there, lots of interest and detail that you don't have to create. You've already got it in your painting. So why not use these, you know, not so great paintings and give them a whole new life? So that's a good tip. The other thing, of course, you can use is things like magazines, a uh, page out of a magazine, any other kind of colour paper you've got lying around, whatever you've got. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the trunk of our tree. Now, on this one, the trunk is really my darkest bit, and I think that works quite nicely. So, obviously, you'll need a quite big, tall piece of paper for this. So, should I, I can't decide whether I want to use this one for a slightly different colour. Mm, I think I'm going to go with the full colour version here. So, the size and shape of your trunk might be slightly kind of decided for you by how big a piece of paper you've got in the colour that you like there. Might, that's quite a kind of tall thin tree, I quite like that. Uh, okay, so what I'm going to do, now some people when they do collage what they like to do is kind of assemble it all first, kind of like I'm very quickly doing here. I kind of like doing this myself actually. So I would start to build my tree like this on top and, and then I can move pieces around and be like, no, I don't quite like it like that. Maybe I'm going to add something a bit different. And you kind of move and you build um, your collage, which is great until you get to the end and then you're like, oh, now I have to stick it all down somehow. Um, and how am I going to do that? So I think what we're going to do, we're going to use a method here of stick as we go. Um, and both methods have their advantages and their drawbacks. You can't kind of rearrange this one so many times. You have to sort of just trust that you're going to gradually build up a good image, but it makes it much less complicated. So let's stick to the simple method for now. Okay, so I'm going to just very confidently stick down my thingy. Now I'm going to work fast here having stuck that down because now I want to do a couple of branches which I might want to actually slide underneath while the glue is still wet. So you can kind of pick things up and rearrange them while the glue is still wet. So let's put a little bit of pressure on me but that's okay. So I'm going to, I'm making a couple of thinner branches here that are just going to go I kind of like it if they're not totally straight, if they've got a little bit of a kind of bend in them maybe to make them look more like an organic shape rather than a straight line. There we go. Can you see that little little bit of a bend I've given it there? So I'm just going to actually pull up the thing I've just glued down. So you've got to work quickly. Oh, you know what? I haven't put any glue on this yet. Um, also, as, as always, I have to say, probably a good idea to put down your a protective cover on your table. I've got this very old and battered cutting mat that I've been using for years, so I don't mind too much if I get glue or whatever on that. There we go, so there's one branch, and now I need maybe, of course, you know, you could decide that you want more than two branches on your tree. Um, I just thought I'd keep it, it's quite nice to keep things simple sometimes. Um, so I've just gone with two branches but you could you could kind of dot branches through the tree a bit more because that is actually if you look at a real life tree you'll see that that's quite realistic actually okay so I'm just gonna go with two now they've actually gone quite high up the page but that's okay because I can stick my um, my bits of tree on top of them okay so I've got my I've uh, got my trunk now and some branches and now I can just have a lot of fun cutting out shapes to be the, um, the sort of bunches of leaves if you like. So I'm going for kind of roughly round shapes, or actually more like ovals maybe. Um, and 
what I want as well is a variety of sizes. So I don't want them all the same size. I want to create some interest in my picture by having not only a variety of different shades of blue. I think I like this picture you'll notice has got a little more variety in the colours. I've gone for sort of pinks, purples, yellows kind of variations on those colours. So you could do that. You could decide that you're going to have a range of colours. I just thought for this one I'm going to try and stick more closely to maybe just one or two colours. So so blue is obviously things like that have a different colour anyway. But blue is kind of my theme here. So so that's the thing that they all have in common. They'll all have a bit of blue in them. Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to turn the camera off and do a little bit more cutting because that's kind of a boring bit. And then we'll come back when I've got a few more shapes cut out and we'll do the assembly. Right, um, okay, so I'm going to look first at my big pieces. I, this is a good tip. Always start with the big pieces with anything like this, I think. Because they're going to be your background pieces and then you're going to layer over smaller pieces on top. I actually don't have, I kind of realised that because I've my tree is actually really tall, I think I don't want too many big pieces. Like, actually this tree, uh, my, my, my leaves are actually taking about half of the whole piece, if you can see that. Whereas with this one, it's going to be, going to be probably less. So there you go, that's one of the perils of sticking down immediately. But actually, I think it might create a quite nice... Um, effect overall to have this kind of quite tall thin tree it'll be slightly something a bit different from the other one if I you know if I decided I was going to do a whole series of these which I might very well do it's kind of good that they're not all going to be sort of similar in shape and then and then the thing to do when you're sort of arranging them is, is just to make sure that you've got um, a good variety so you haven't got Hopefully you haven't got the same pattern touching too often. Um, yeah. Okay, so here we are. Um, I've been busy sticking and uh, I've nearly finished I think. I'm just going to do a few more. Um, now you would, might have spotted <laughs> there's been a change to the picture. Um, because I was really struggling to fit in all the uh, tops that I, all the nice shapes that I wanted to. So I came up with this idea of adding some extra branches a bit lower down. Because, uh, you know, thinking creatively is often about problem solving. And problem solving is often about thinking creatively. The two things go together very well. That's why one of the reasons that creativity and art is such a valuable thing, I think. Um... So I had a little problem that I'd created for myself and I think hopefully I've found a solution. So again, a little bit of variety. It wasn't what I planned to do at the start, but often in art that's that's how it goes. You kind of have to adapt your plan as you go along. And uh, yeah, I'm quite pleased with how it looks. I think it looks good. I also decided as I was arranging that um, I did like the little splashes of colour. So I've been adding those in. So that's that's the benefit of doing a little bit of arranging before you stick. Just get a feel for what works. On the other hand, I decided that I actually didn't like these pieces because I think the background colour was too similar to the background of our whole picture and it, somehow they just didn't quite stand out. Um, that's just my opinion, you know. Someone else might um, decide that that's a really nice effect. But But for me... My feeling was that that just wasn't working for me very well. Um, so, yeah, so I guess what I'm saying is do have a little play around with them before you stick them. Even if you then kind of stick them without a really detailed idea of where they're going. At least you've had a little, a little got a feel for what's working and what's not working. Uh, right, I think I'm nearly done here. I might have a little play around and do a few more, but I think uh, I think for the purposes of our video, we'll say that that is done. So there it is. There's my collage tree made with 
sort of homemade collage papers as well as a selection of um, you know envelopes and uh, just plain papers as well um, yeah and there it is okay I hope if you have a go at this yourself you are really pleased with your picture and that you have a lot of fun okay enjoy bye